If you enjoy Draw and Paint with Jury Gray on YouTube and would like to show your support, you can find Cash App and Venmo information below. By all means, this channel is free to watch and learn from. Enjoy! Hey everyone, I am back with another video. So when it comes to this video, you guys, this video is for my abstract drawing class one. And um, I do want to talk a bit about the class. Um, this class is um, pretty much you can take this class at CAC. Uh, the reason why I want to talk about it because I just want to uh, just kind of lay out a bit of um, an idea of what this project for this class is about. So when it comes to after drawing one, I have designed it in a way where students are going to learn not only the elements of art, but principles of design, but they're also going to learn about thumbnails. They're also going to learn about um, how to compose within a paper format. Um, so there's a lot of moving parts to it. So this is week one of the class. And although we've already gotten an idea of some of the building blocks that it is for a project, one I definitely want to talk just a bit about what project one is so um, in the class I definitely do lecture elements of art principles of design um, the difference between non-objective art and also the difference between abstract art uh, that's very important because those two tend to get a bit confusing sometimes for young artists I, I know when I was a young artist I was very confused because I thought they were the same thing but they're kind of two different things so if you don't know the difference between the two yes you can ask the google or i'm gonna pretty much just tell you but um when it comes to abstract art abstract art is pretty much just that if you think about it i am a realist artist so realism is pretty much your drawing or painting or, or sculpting whatever you are doing but it looks realistic right so so i pretty much know what I am looking at when I see the artwork. I know that maybe it's a still life of apples. I know that it's a portrait of a boy or a portrait of a woman, right? So when it comes to abstract, abstract is taking that idea, but abstract is pretty much distorting it, changing a few things, maybe eliminating the face of the portrait, maybe just showing shapes of fruits or vegetables, stuff like that. So you're just changing your elements, distorting them, um, basically could be changing colors is a whole lot of things you could definitely do uh to distort what you are seeing or distort um the actual uh what we think is real um in a actual painting drawing or sculpture so on and so forth so when it comes to non-objective non-objective is the opposite of realism so non-objective just means that uh we have no idea <laughs> sometimes we have no idea as what is going on in the actual artwork but um not objective art definitely does deal with um elements of art which is line shape form texture value volume mass so on and so forth right um and pretty much it organize it within a composition Re representational art or realism art, um, non-objective or non-representational abstract, um, they all deal with the same elements of art and principles of design. So it's very important to understand that. So just a little bit about um, this project. So this is a demo the demo video for the project. And I just wanna make sure that um, students who may have missed the class kind of have an idea of what they should do when it comes to project one. That's really what this video is for. So when it comes to project one, you guys, project one is um, pretty much, I am assigning a element to students, which is a line. So you see here, this is my sketchbook that's here. So you see here, I am assigning a line. Um, and also, I also assigned principles of design uh, to students, which they have the option of choosing balance or pattern, right? Uh, or some students decided to choose uh, both, but 
uh, it really is up to you. So when it comes to line in class, I also lectured the different types of lines. So in this, in my actual sketchbook, I drew out different types of line just so I have some type of reference that is there. I also told students that you can also Google different types of lines and get images that way as well if you don't want to put it in your sketchbook. So if you hear me saying sketchbook, 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 right? Um, students are in this class. I do have them have a very small sketchbook. That way we can get down our ideas. I think it's important that um, students learn how to do thumbnails, learn how to get their ideas down in thumbnails and pretty much exhaust their ideas. Sometimes, um, I don't even wanna say students, just human beings in general, we tend to have all these different ideas um, and sometimes we don't really exhaust our ideas. So that's what I love about a sketchbook. You get to um, explore, you get to um, try different things and new things and um, explore all your ideas and exhaust them. So what I love about thumbnails, and these are thumbnails, thumbnails are um, a great starting point if you are a creator and you're trying to think of some type of um, artwork that you want to compose within a paper format. So these little rectangles and also squares. And I also want to talk a little bit about paper formats. Your paper formats does not necessarily have to be a rectangle or a square. It can be triangle, it can be circular, it can be diamond, whatever you want to do. Your paper format is really up to you as an artist, what you want to do in your creativity. Uh, so it's always important to uh start with your format <laughs> that's important uh and then you want to exhaust your ideas even with format then from there you want to think about okay what are what is my element my element there's all different types of line type uh there is horizontal lines zigzag lines there are curly lines there's um actually implied lines light lines lost lines there's all different types of lines that you can use in your composition and you want to make sure that you are utilizing the ones that makes a lot more sense to what you're trying to say or your voice in your actual artwork, what you're trying to convey, where there's context, where there's content, um, whether it could just be maybe there is an, an abstract or non objective artist that you're interested in and you just really want to take a little piece of what they bring to the table and um, make it your own so you can definitely always appropriate um it's always good to appropriate <laughs> i say that with a question mark because um you want to make sure you change up the artwork as much as possible because other than that you're just copying so but it's always good to take inspiration from another artist as well so when it comes to this um when it comes to project one you guys i want students to spend about an hour of the time in class to get their ideas down in thumbnails um to also understand what is the element that I want students to use, as well as what is the principle of design. So here I have balance and I also have pattern. So in a composition, this is a, a pretty much a paper format that is the frame of your composition. Um, that means that your lines in your composition needs to be balanced. So right here, what's happening on one side needs to happen on the other to the best of your ability. I know we are doing small thumbnails. Um, and as you can see, I chose pretty much kind of implied lines that are dashes, as well as very thick um, dark lines and thick mid-tone lines. If you're seeing a thin or a light X, that's just me trying to balance out the composition. So I know what's happening on this side needs to happen on that side, right? So if we also have line, which is here, all the different types of line. And then we also have the principle of balance, right? So I have this composition here, or sorry, principle of balance and principle of pattern. So this composition here is using the principle of pattern. Pattern can get very complicated very soon, very quickly, because uh, there's a lot of different patterns that are out there, a lot of different names. I try my best to simplify it down as actual pattern, are an irregular or regular or irregular pattern and the reason why i'm saying that is you're taking a unit so this is a unit of a pattern and you can repeat it right over and over again so it's repetition that's what makes it a pattern if you take um let's say i take this unit 
and I um, disrupt this repetition, but I have patterns going in different, this unit going in different directions, right? So I have the different units going in different directions can be an irregular pattern. There's a lot of different patterns that are out there. I just wanted to simplify it in that way. So this, I tried my best to make it a, a consistent repetition. Um, there's some of these units that are not 100% mirrored are um, the same. So I probably could, you know, sweep it under irregular pattern as well. So you guys, uh, when it comes to this class, the whole goal is I want my students to think about um, think about how they are producing and creating art. Typically, as young artists, we tend to just go for it and hope for the best. I want my students to really think it through. So starting with the logic side of it, which is line, which is elements of art and principles of design, um, and then starting with, okay, how I'm going to compose lines into one composition, um, how I'm going to use line um, into a balance, how I'm going to use line um, as a pattern, you know, so those are the things that you're thinking about ahead of time before you're just going in uh, willy nilly. So in class, we are going to do three um, compositions. So as you see here, I haven't even completed the third composition, but um, for students that may have missed the class, they actually get an idea of at least with the first hour of what we want to do with this 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 actual project. So um, in class and for this project, students are only using um, a regular old um, just pencil, graphite pencil. Uh, so I have students use a full range of graphite pencils. In this demo, I'm using Prismacol erase pencils because um, I just don't, I'm not in the mood for smearing of graphite <laughs> when it comes to this demo. Uh, so I'm just going to keep it simple <laughs> and use Prismacol erase pencils. So um, Another thing that I definitely want to talk about is once we are done with our three compositions that are here, students are able to pick a composition that they actually do like. Um, once they pick a composition that they like, then they're going to um, transfer that composition onto uh, their final sheet of paper, which is a bigger sheet of paper. So typically we are working 11 by 17 or 12 by 18. Some students do have the option of working a little bit smaller if need be. Um, so in this demo, I'm going to decide to do this composition which is composition one so it's just a quick easy simple to the point composition that way students have an idea of what I want them to do when it comes to this actual in-class assignment uh, so I so I can eliminate a whole lot of talking <laughs> I am going to cut a clip and you guys um, I will see you in the next clip and in the next clip, you will see the demo. You will see me transfer over my drawing um, step by step. Uh, and I may do a voiceover. So just kind of keep that in mind. But other than that, I'll see you in the next clip. Bye. Hey, everyone. So I'm coming in with just a very, very brief um, uh, voice over just so you guys can get a very clear idea of what I am doing or at least how to blow up your thumbnail from um, its thumbnail size to a bigger sheet of paper so to start with um, I do have my thumbnail in the corner that I um, placed that we have an idea of what was my um, my theme, my concept, my ideas prior to um, doing the bigger final project. So um, as you can see, I came in with an X because I just wanted to divide my composition into halves because I am thinking about the principle of balance. So I just want to make sure it was happening on one side of my composition or in the format of my paper. It's also happening on the other side of my paper as well. So once I came in with that X, I was able to um, use that X also as a grid just to make sure that I'm placing things close to what I have drawn in my thumbnail. So over time, as I start to place down my composition, and I am thinking more of it as a rough gesture to start with, and then from there I start to um, plug in my local values of my actual lines and then from there um, I eventually start to uh, change things up so I'm not sure if I'm 100% happy with my end product but because um, I really did like the idea of my thumbnail but the process is the process the end product is what I got um, and you guys I hope I hope that this definitely does help with just understanding a little bit of um, what we are doing in this class as far as using thumbnail 
thumbnails as references as well as understanding the principles of design and elements of art and also just um how to lay out a non-objective drawing because that's really what this is is a non-objective drawing so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and continue to watch it and i'll see you guys in the next demo bye guys